Hello, this is Wampire. For today's video, I want to share with you all a concept for uh, Eskrima. Okay, so years ago, years ago, I, I saw a video on YouTube with this guy who was an expert with a sword, right? And he was teaching sword fighting techniques from his traditional martial art um, style. And it, it was very interesting and fascinating and everything. And uh, one of the things that he was saying, right, was that um, and, and I think he was deliberately talking about Eskrima, all right? And imagine, okay, so imagine that this is uh, my opponent's target, and imagine that there is uh, their weapon right here. And he was saying that they don't do weapon to weapon where the two weapons collide, that they don't do weapon clashing, basically. He said that if a weapon's right here, that you're going to move to a superior position and strike like so, okay? So he was saying, you know, we don't hit the weapon and then try to, you know, go for the body or whatever. He was like, you avoid the weapon and then, you know, you hit the target, the desired target by, by body positioning, all right? So uh, first I want to say that that makes... Total sense, 100% total sense, I agree with, all right, that we want to, you know, hit the main target areas. Of course, absolutely. But um, from a different perspective, what makes Eskrima so uh, great, in a sense, is, is that it's a very realistic style, in my opinion, because one of the things is we understand that it's hard to go to the main target areas, that it's difficult, that this is going to be naturally protected. My opponent's not stupid, and, and unless you're awesome and you outclass your opponent big time, then it's going to be difficult to be able to do something like that, you know, um, in, in actual combat. So the realistic approach here is, you know, to actually go for something lesser and therefore defang the snake, which is we go for their arms and stuff. So. You know, rather, yes, of course, going for the head, the neck and stuff is a much, much better target. But we realize it's difficult and, and the opponent can be really, really good. They might even be better. So in that case, we're going to have to go for a lesser target and attack their hands. Okay, so the main idea here is to go for less, all right? That makes it a little bit more realistic, all right? So now we're going to apply that same concept, okay? to boxing. So in boxing, they have the jab, right? So boom, boom, and then they have, of course, something like the cross, which is going to be a lot more powerful. That is the punch that you're going to have a better chance of KOing your opponent, knocking them out. And to knock them out with a jab is highly unlikely, even though some jabs are, if you've ever been you know, hit by a solid jab, I mean, it, there's, it does not feel weak at all. But it's still, once again, highly unlikely that you're going to get knocked out from a jab. It's going to be that one or some other punch that's going to do the job, not the jab, right? But boxers understand that it's difficult to just land this, so they use the jab, right? So they use the jab to set up the opponent. And for a street situation, that's also exactly the counter argument for a lot of people. They say, well, you know, exactly. I, I, we don't do that. We don't practice the jab because it doesn't have stopping power because, you know, in a real life situation, I'm not playing a game to set up the opponent for this. I don't have that time, you know? So what I'm going for is the hard, you know, finishing moves, brutal assault moves as fast and as hard as I can. That's what a lot of people think, right? But if we take the Eskrima perspective, you take the screamer perspective and you go, okay, my opponent on the street can be very, very tough. And yes, I want to knock him out, but I may not be able to. So therefore, use the same tactics as with the sticks or any other weapon that we do. And so we have to go with a lesser, lesser weapon. Boom, boom, boom. So now the jab makes sense. So if you go use the screamer perspective, it's the same as the boxing perspective. And we're on the same page as boxing, but you could use boxing now for the street because, once again, that makes sense for an Eskrima practitioner using that concept. Using lesser weapons, lesser targets, 
All right, so obviously for this video, I want to work on the jab with you guys, okay? So the jab normally is, you know, the side that's in the front, right? This is the side. So right now it's my right hand. So this, my right hand is just going to go boom, like that, right? Boom, like so. We're going to give it an Eskrima touch to it. So with the Eskrima, we have one and two. These diagonal motions right here, one and two. This is huge for us. We do it with the sticks. We do it all the time. We do it with the knives and blades and stuff, one and two. So what we're going to do is we're going to give this jab, just boom, like this. We're going to give it this and this motion, okay? So you're going to throw the jab here, okay, where it has a little bit of that diagonal downwards motion this way. Okay, boom, boom, boom. So I hope you can see the difference that it is actually coming down a little bit this way instead of just a straight jab like so. So the other one is to go this way. So you're gonna put a little bit of motion, a little bit of diagonal cut right there, boom, like so. One and two. This is good like when going to the knife because the knife, your movements are gonna be smaller. With a stick, of course, they're a lot bigger. With something like a machete, a short sword, definitely your motions are going to be uh, much longer, but with a knife, they're going to be more compact, so this is much closer to the knife movement. So one and two, so it's good practice this way, so practice throwing your jabs this way, one and two. And this is also very good uh, because for us, this motion right here, boom, boom, now we go into the figure eight motion, okay? So you can throw your jab, boom and you can go into figure eight right here. So go this way, boom, boom, all right? So throw your jab, two, and then you can see how that figure eight motion leads into our destruction defense. So from here, boom, boom, right? Boom, see? Now you can go this way, boom, boom, with that small diagonal cut this way, and one here, here, boom, boom. So it could go this way, it could go this way. That's our figure eight motion. So now we're including defense along with our jab. And it works, it blends in together very well because the angles are the same. The angles of the punching of my attack is on the diagonal line and so is my defense. Whether it's a parry or whether it's a full blown one of these destructions, whether it's just a parry this way or it's an elbow this way. And if I want to throw a punch, once again, the lines are the same. They blend in together. So I could be throwing my jab out this way. Boom, 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 boom. Going this way with a small diagonal motion or this way. And my defense is going to be there. All right, so in conclusion, I hope you can see that the boxing and the Filipino martial arts, the Eskrima, they are very, very close-knit together. And this is why I say that basically the boxing and the screamer, you guys should do both and basically, you know, intertwine them together. That's it for now. Thank you for watching and take care, folks.